I'm one of those. My family vacations are always a little strange. My parents got divorced when I was in the sixth grade, but have remained friends and have continued to go on family vacations together, which now include their new partners. Mostly, it's really great. Sometimes, it's a little strange. One Thanksgiving, we decided to go to Istanbul. My mom, my dad, his girlfriend, her son, my sister, and me. One big happy family. Istanbul is a beautiful place, full of cathedrals turned into mosques, turned back into cathedrals, and vice versa. 5 a.m. calls to prayer echo across the city, blasting from loudspeakers atop minarets. We spent the better part of our week visiting historic sites, going to spice markets, and seeing, uh, seeking out hookah bars. Besides the constant harassment from the men selling wares, it was lovely. On one of our last days, we decided to go to a Turkish bath. I pictured scenes straight out of Cleopatra where beautiful people lounge around in steamy, tiled rooms. Our Turkish bath was not like the movies. Before we left our hotel, we discussed what this experience might be like and how to prepare for it. We knew the men and women would be divided and that there would be some communal spa time. That said, we wanted to be sure the women were all on the same page in terms of attire. Due to our family dynamics, namely the fact that my mom and my dad's girlfriend were about to be chilling in a spa together, we felt the potential for nudity was worthy of discussion. It was decided that we will all wear bottoms. That seemed pretty reasonable. It avoided any comments on people's shaving habits, or in my case, the lack thereof. While still allowing us to not appear to be prude Americans, although clearly we were since we had to discuss it in the first place and had also opted for something less simple, nudity. When we arrived at the bathhouse, we were ushered into dressing rooms by a pushy Turkish woman who spoke little English. She must have assumed my mom and dad's girlfriend were sisters because she put them together in a dressing room while my sister and I were assigned another shared room. As the woman pushed us into her assigned dressing room, she thrust towels at us. The towels were thin and pretty, pretty much the size of a hand towel. As the towels were thrust, the woman also grunted at us, all off. Perhaps it was the authority in her voice or the gruffness of her accent, but my sister and I felt we had no choice but to remove all our clothing or risk her wrath. The towels were just big enough to be tied over our boobs and cover our crotches. If there were no sudden movements, our modesty would be preserved. Surely this was the intent of the towels. I reasoned that the towel would be an acceptable replacement for my respectable cotton panties, so out of the closet I went, minus bottoms, but plus a mini towel. Our lovely host led us down a narrow tiled hallway filled with steam. Eventually, it opened up into a larger room with faucets jutting out of the walls at about shin height. It was more like a steam dungeon than a Cleopatra-worthy spa. My mom and dad's girlfriend were already there, seated next to a faucet. They were splashing the cool water on themselves, relieving them from the oppressive steam that filled the room. I noticed immediately that they had stuck to our previous pact and were still wearing their bottoms and their towels were being used as seat cushions instead. I did not have enough time to fully process this when the pushy proprietor turned to me and without the least bit of warning ripped my towel off of me. I gasped in horror. There I was, standing fully exposed. Bush on display. Small tits bursting forth, forth with zest as they were unexpectedly freed from their bondage. Now, <clears throat> I've been naked in public before and since. Uh, public being a relative term, gym locker rooms, skinny dipping excursions, etc. It wasn't so much the nakedness as the shock of someone else exposing me, especially after our discussion. I was on display and everyone else was sitting and staring at me, standing there. Then the laughter started. 
roaring, uncontrollable laughter. Now, I was naked in front of everyone and being laughed at. <laughs> Even the pushy Turkish lady was laughing. Fear of being naked in front of a crowd is a common nightmare, and now I was living it. Eventually, everyone regained their composure, and I was returned my towel. The chuckling continued, however, and there were multiple attempts to imitate the expression on my face to everyone's amusement. I tried to laugh it off and pretend that it was all cool. <laughs> the rest of the spa time was pretty enjoyable, but also a little strange. The gruff Turkish woman washed me later, despite the fact that I was in my late 20s. Yes, I said washed, as you would wash a small child. She surrounded me in a sea of soap bubbles and sang Turkish songs to me as she scrubbed me from head to toe with what's some sort of rough loofah-like sponge. That's a story in itself, really, because no one else was sung to as they were washed. <laughs> Maybe the woman felt I needed extra childlike care after my humiliation in the steam room. But once we were back at the hostel, my family shared my story with the boys, of course, again imitating my gasp and the expression on my face, explaining that it was all just too much for anyone to ignore, and once the person started laughing there, there was no stopping the rest of the people. When my loving family recounted the story to my dad, he helpfully added that he didn't understand what the big deal was, since women's genitalia are basically turtle heads, well hidden most of the time. Right? Thanks for that, Dad. <laughs> now I know how you think of women's genitalia. Lucky me. <laughs> Thank you.